get some instant analysis. Welcome to CBS Sports Combat Analyst Brian Campbell here to recap UFC 300. Are you not entertained? Alex Pereira making quick work of Jamal Hill via first round knockout retains his light heavyweight title. He waves off Herb Dean and then he looks into the, one of the cameras when the fight is over as if he was saying, what do you want from me? BC, how is Pereira making this look so easy? Not even in the UFC, three full years after transitioning from a successful two-division championship kickboxing career, we are watching one of the greatest takeovers in modern sports history from just making that quick adjustment and making it look like he was born to do this. Eight fights into his UFC career, Alex Pereira is a two-division champion who's defended the title in both divisions, headlined multiple big-time cards, including at Madison Square Garden, and has now knocked out Jamal Hill, the former champion who never lost his belt inside the cage with the first significant punch landed in the deepest and arguably most spectacular card in UFC history. And what did he do in his call out afterwards? Said, oh, by the way, I wasn't hurt. We got a card coming up next month in Brazil. How about you put me on there? Add heavyweight. Yes, if we ever had an idea of who might become the first fighter to at least have a chance at becoming a three-division UFC champion. You're looking at him right there in Alex Pedeta, and you can't just say it's the power, right? It's the smarts, it's the precision, it's the experience, the high-level combat experience. Look, this fight was criticized for being the main event of UFC 300 with so many big names available, including Conor McGregor, including Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje, who put on an action classic on this night. But I'll tell you what, I don't know if the UFC got the matchup right, but they got the right fighter because what Padeta is doing is historic on an entirely another level. He's dominant, he's dangerous, and I don't know where his ceiling is. That's something right there. How about the fact low blow from Jamal Hill and then Herb Dean's about to step in and he goes no 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 get, get out of my face I'm going to take care of business right now like I I can't remember seeing something like that well he's always been so stoic and humble which is such a key part of Alex Pereira's character in, in his development but let's not forget he does have one very high profile defeat inside the octagon that came in his MMA rematch with Israel Adesanya when he lost that middleweight title that he originally won by knocking Adesanya, his longtime kickboxing rival, out in the fifth round of their first meeting. And if you remember their rematch in Miami, it involved Israel Adesanya not only producing one of the greatest come-from-behind knockouts we've seen in the title level, but his celebration in that moment was a little bit of taunting and a lot of just perfect timing there. You can see how Pereira caught a little bit of that showmanship and delivered it because he heard the trash talk from Jamal Hill on the build to this fight, but he stayed true to himself, knows his strengths, and oh, by the way, he also redeemed the loss of his mentor, brother, and almost really at times father figure in the great, the great Glover Teixeira. We saw Pereira move his camp to Connecticut in recent years, and that dynamic duo, him and his great coach Pereira, uh, in Teixeira, who lost, by the way, the vacant title opportunity against Jamal Hill just a couple years back, it really was a perfect night. He got the celebration. He got another big historic performance on such a historic night. What else can you say about Alex Pereira outside of legend, Hall of Famer already? The only thing now, as we tease, is what else could he accomplish? Maybe, just maybe, causing some danger up there at heavyweight. One of three titles on the line at UFC 300. BMF title living up to its name. Max Holloway living up to his name. Masterclass, one of the greatest finishes in UFC history. BC, I don't really need to even ask a question. I'm just going to tell you to go because this was awesome. <laughs> this was awesome. Look, it was the BMF championship. This should have been the main event of this historic card. When you look at the star power and the expectations for violence, even though we got violence, the prevailing headline was this virtuoso performance from Max Holloway moving up in weight. Yes, he's only 32 years old. But he started fighting in the UFC when he was a teenager, long before he became the featherweight king. And we have counted him out a few times including after his trilogy loss, which was his third straight defeat to the great Alexander Volkanovsky, who bloodied and battered him across five rounds. It didn't look like Max Holloway had a lot left. And when he signed on the dotted line against maybe the most dangerous, all-action, fan-friendly fighter in the sports history in Justin Gaethje, which involved moving up in weight back up to lightweight, the, the chorus of 
obituaries for Max's career from longtime MMA journalists, from hardcore fans. You know what that did? That lit a fire under Max Holloway. What we saw right here was what greatness is all about, the ability to dial back, take the criticism, use it as fuel. And the key for Max Holloway this time, unlike the last time we saw him move up to lightweight when he lost to Dustin Poirier in their rematch in 2019 for the vacant title, you saw Holloway rebuild his body so that he is a full-fledged lightweight on this night. And his ability to walk down there, lure Justin Gaethje into a vicious duel, and then knock him out with no time left on the clock after five all-action rounds, after pointing in the center of the cage, right? The famous call that we saw Max Holloway do back at UFC 199 against Ricardo Lamas in the closing seconds. He did it again. Only this time he delivered the walk-off KO against maybe, maybe, right? One of the hardest guys to finish in this sport's history. This is greatness. This is Michael Jordan coming back from baseball in 1996 to reestablish his dominance. This is what the great ones do. And although there were plenty of highlights on this great night of fighting, this was Max Holloway's night altogether. Hey, you know we talked about the $300,000 bonuses that UFC was flaunting to throw around? How about you double that? How about you put another zero on the end? Give him $6 million, Give him $60 million. Max Holloway showed once again why he's one of the greatest fighters of all time. And boy, is he not done yet, Hakeem, calling out featherweight champion Ilya Teporia, saying he's willing to go to Spain to do it. This is what we ask of, of the ones that we declare to be great. Oh, wow. Max Holloway's great. Uh, I would love to see that fight. But by the way, you're out here throwing $60 million around, so let me get a piece of that as well. Uh, I'm going to write that down. BC's throwing $60 million out. Okay. Uh, I mean, wouldn't that be great, though, if we saw Max and Ilya in Spain fighting i mean with a title on the line like that would that would that would be a spectacle in and of itself it's one of the biggest fights you can make in the sport and i don't want to judge toporia who just took out the longtime king right in the thorn and holloway side and alexander volkanovsky to announce his star making performance there and what's his future out of spain it didn't look like cage side in las vegas on this night when they flashed to him that toporia was all into this idea but if UFC has their their wants and, and certainly they have the control to make it, Holloway's as big of a star as they have in the UFC, especially after that performance. Why not match him with one of the biggest risers we've seen in years and the always dangerous Teporia? Not only does that have the makings to be another shootout, what else can Max Holloway do to continue to add to his game in his early 30s and show us that he's not done yet, not by a mile? Yeah, tied for the third most knockouts in UFC history with 11, reminding us, uh, I'm still here, I'm him. Co-main event, Zhang Weili putting her strawweight belt on the line against Yan Zhao Nan. And she defends her strawweight title via unanimous decision. Looked like Zhang Wei Li got a submission in the first round, BC, but the horn saved Yan Zhao Nan. What did you see in that moment? Well, look, referee Jason Herzog could have stopped the fight right here. You're watching the replay. Zhao Nan looked out. Herzog did give her the chance to stand up on her own power. And I have to say, the decision was questionable as she didn't know what corner to walk back to and needed to literally be pointed in that direction. And in round two, Whaley took John on down, nearly stopped her with strikes. You could argue once again that Herzog should have stepped in a second time as Shannon was taking a series of clean punches and elbows from top position from the champion. But to Shannon's credit in this all Chinese showdown, boy, did she have the toughness to rally back Maybe Zhang Wali poured out a little bit too much of the jug and going for the finish in round two. We saw Shannon furiously come back, win round three dominantly, drop the champion three times. But in the end, it was that championship experience, the grappling control, and by the way, the stamina of the champion Zhang Wei We argued, hey, all Chinese showdown should have put it on Chinese soil. This one, though, turned out to be a surprise on this UFC 300 card in the in the, let's say, fireworks it delivered. But at the end of the day, the best straw weight in the world is still Zhang Wei Li, the second defense of her title in the second reign as champion. Yes, she lost twice to Rose Nami Yunus in 2021, but she's 9-0 and against every other straw weight UFC was able to put out there against her, and she proved once again why she's on top. Well done, UFC, putting together a heck of a card, one of the greatest cards in UFC history, and it delivered on this night. Brian Campbell, bring it down for us here on CBS Sports HQ. Thank you, sir. And here's a look at the UFC 300 main card results.
Bo Nickel took care of business, submitting Cody Brundage in round two, improving to 6-0 in the UFC. Armin Sarukian came out on top in a back-and-forth battle, possibly earning him a rematch against Islam Makachev. This time, that would be for the belt. BMF title bout, we told you Max Holloway caps a masterful performance with one of the greatest knockouts of the year. Round five, final seconds, puts Gaethje out cold. Co-main event, Zhang Wei Li nearly got the first round submission, then got dropped later on, but shook off the cobwebs, dominated the remainder of the fight to retain her strawweight title, the unanimous decision. Main event, Alex Pereira waves off Herb Dean, proceeds to knock out Jamal Hill with his signature left hook. The power is real at UFC 300.